Welcome to Starting Scripture, uh, reading of the Bible with Keturah. Today is day 94, and we are reading Judges 12 to 14. Judges 12, Ephraim fights with Jephthah. Then the people of Ephraim mobilized an army and crossed over the Jordan River to Zaphon. They send this message to Jephthah. Why didn't you call for us to help you fight against the Amorites? We are going to burn down your house with you in it. Jephthah replied, I summoned you at the beginning of the dispute, but you refused to come. You failed to help us in our struggle against Ammon. So when I realized you weren't coming, I risked my life and went into battle without you. And the Lord gave me victory over the Ammonites. So why have you now come to fight me? People of Ephraim responded, you men of Gilead are nothing more than fugitives from Ephraim and Manasseh. So Jephthah gathered all the men of Gilead and attacked the men of Ephraim and defeated them. Jephthah ca captured the shallow crossings at the, of the Jordan River, and whenever a fugitive from Ephraim tried to go back across, the men of Gilead would challenge him. Are you a member of the tribe of Ephraim? They would ask. If the man said, no, I'm not, they would tell him to say Shibboleth. If he was from Ephraim, he would say Sibboleth, because people from Ephraim cannot pronounce the word correctly. Then they would take him and kill him at the shallow crossings of the Jordan. In all, 42,000 Ephraimites were killed at that time. Jephthah judged Israel for six years. When he died, he was buried in one of the towns of Gilead. Ibzan becomes Israel's judge. After Jephthah died, Ibzan from Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons and 30 daughters. He sent his daughters to marry men outside his clan and he brought in 30 young women from outside his clan to marry his sons. Ibzan judged Israel for seven years. When he died, he was buried at Bethlehem. Elon becomes Israel's judge. After Ibzan died, Elon from the tribe of Zebulun judged Israel for 10 years. When he died, he was buried at Aijalon in Zebulun. Abdon becomes Israel's judge. After Elon died, Abdon, son of Hillel, from Pirathon, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 donkeys. He judged Israel for eight years. When he died, he was buried at Pirathon in Ephraim in the hill country of the Amalekites. Judges 13. The birth of Samson. Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Philistines who oppressed them for 40, day, 40 years. In those days, a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan lived in the town of Zorah. His wife was unable to become pregnant and they had no children. The angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and said, even though you have been unable to have children, you will soon become pregnant and give birth to a son. So be careful. You may, must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink nor eat any forbidden food. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and his hair must never be cut, for he will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth. He will begin to rescue Israel from the Philistines. The woman ran and told her husband, a man of God appeared to me. He looked like one of God's angels, terrifying to see. I didn't ask where he was from, and he didn't tell me his name, but he told me, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must not drink wine or any other alcoholic drink nor eat any forbidden food for your son will be dedicated to God as a Nazarite from the moment of his birth until the day of his death. Then Manoah prayed to the Lord saying, Lord, please let the man of God come back to us again and give us more instructions about this son who is to be born. God answered Manoah's prayer and the angel of God appeared once again to his wife as she was sitting in the field. But her husband, Manoah, was not with her. So she quickly ran and told her husband, the man who appeared to me the other day is here again. Manoah ran back with his wife and asked, are you the man who spoke to my wife the other day? Yes, he replied, I am. So Manoah asked him, when your words come true, what kind of rules should govern the boy's life and work? The angel of the Lord replied, be sure your wife follows the instructions I gave her. She must not eat grapes or raisins drink wine or any other alcoholic drink, or eat any forbidden food. Then Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, please stay here until we can prepare a young goat for you to eat. I will stay, the angel of the Lord replied. 
but I will not eat anything. However, you may prepare a burnt offering as a sacrifice to the Lord. Manoah didn't realize it was the angel of the Lord. Then Manoah asked the angel of the Lord, what is your name? For when all this comes true, we want to honor you. Why do you ask my name? The angel of the Lord replied. It is too wonderful for you to understand. Then Manoah took a young goat and a grain offering and offered it on a rock as a sacrifice to the Lord. And as Manoah and his wife watched, the Lord did an amazing thing. As the flames from the altar shot up toward the sky, the angel of the Lord ascended in the fire. When Manoah and his wife saw this, they fell with their faces to the ground. The angel did not appear again to Manoah and his wife. Manoah finally realized it was the angel of the Lord. And he said to his wife, we will certainly die for we have seen God. But his wife said, if the Lord was going to kill us, he wouldn't have accepted our burnt offering and grain offering. He wouldn't have appeared to us and told us this wonderful thing and done these miracles. When her son was born, she named him Samson and the Lord blessed him as he grew up. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him while he lived in Mahanadan which is located between the towns of Zorah and Eshtal. Judges 14. Samson's Riddle. One day when Samson was in Timnah, one of the Philistine women caught his eye. When he returned home, he told his father and mother, a young Philistine woman in Timnah caught my eye. I want to marry her. Get her for me. His father and mother objected. Isn't there even one woman in our tribe or among all the Israelites you could marry? They asked, why must you go to the pagan Philistines to find a wife? But Samson told his father, get her for me. She looks good to me. His father and mother didn't realize the Lord was at work in this, creating an opportunity to work against the Philistines who ruled over Israel at that time. As Samson and his parents were going down to Timnah, a young lion suddenly attacked Samson near the vineyards of Timnah. At that moment, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it as easily as if it were a young goat, but he didn't tell his father or mother about it. When Samson arrived in Timnah, he talked with the woman and was very pleased with her. Later, when he returned to Timnah for the wedding, he turned off the path to look at the carcass of the lion and he found that a swarm of bees had made some honey in the carcass. He scooped some of the honey into his hands and ate it along the way. He also gave some to his father and mother, and they ate it, but he didn't tell them he had taken the honey from the carcass of the lion. As his father was making final arrangements for the marriage, Samson threw a party at Timnah, as was custom for elite young men. When the bride's parents saw him, they selected 30 young men from the town to be his companions. Samson said to them, let me tell you a riddle. If you solve my riddle during these seven days of the celebration, I will give you 30 fine linen robes and 30 sets of festive clothing. But if you can't solve it, then you must give me 30 fine linen robes and 30 sets of festive clothing. All right, they agreed. Let's hear your riddle. So he said, out of the one who eats came something to eat. Out of the strong came something sweet. Three days later, they were still trying to figure it out. On the fourth day, they said to Samson's wife, entice your husband to explain the riddle for us, or we will burn down your father's house with you in it. Did you invite us to this party just to make us poor? So Samson's wife came to him in tears and said, you don't love me. You hate me. You have given my people a riddle, but you haven't told me the answer. I haven't even given the answer to my father or mother, he replied. Why should I tell you? So she cried whenever she was with him and kept it up for the rest of the celebration. At last, on the seventh day, he told her the answer because she was tormenting him with her nagging. Then she explained the riddle to the young men. So before sunset on the seventh day, the men of the tower came to Samson with their answer. What is sweeter than honey? Who is, what is stronger than a lion? Samson replied, if you hadn't plowed with my heifer, you wouldn't have solved the, my riddle. Then the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. He went down to the town of Ashkelon, killed 30 men, took their belongings, and gave their clothing to the men who had solved this riddle. But Samson was furious about what had happened, and he went back home to live with his father and mother. So his wife was given in marriage to the man who had been Samson's best man at the wedding. Psalm 147. Praise the Lord. How good to sing praises to our God, 
How delightful and how fitting. The Lord is rebuilding Jerusalem and bringing the exiles back to Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. He counts the stars and calls them all by name. How great is our Lord. His power is absolute. His understanding is beyond comprehension. The Lord supports the humble, but he brings the wicked down into the dust. Sing out your thanks to the Lord. Sing praises to our God with a harp. He covers the heavens with clouds, provides rain for the earth, and makes the grass grow in mountain pastures. He gives food to wild animals and feeds the young ravens when they cry. He takes no pleasure in the strength of a horse or in human might. No, the Lord's delight is in those who fear him, those who put their hope in his unfailing love. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates and blessed your children within your walls. He sends peace across your nation and satisfies your hunger with finest sweet. He sends his orders to the world. How swiftly his world word flies. He sends the snow like white wool. He scatters frost upon the ground like ashes. He hurls the hail like stones. Who can stand up against his freezing cold? Then at his command, it all melts. He sends his winds and the ice thaws. He has revealed his words to Jacob, his decrees and regulations to Israel. He has not done this for any other nation. They do not know his regulations. Praise the Lord. And now the Lord's prayer. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Dear Lord, direct our paths this day through your Holy Spirit. Your child, your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.